My first impressions of Tupac uh, as a young person was uh, a very articulate, inquisitive, um, and sensitive young man. Uh, he was constantly asking questions. He, he was constantly moving around. He had the kind of energy that you could just see when he moved through the room. Uh, among other youngsters, you could really distinguish him between anyone else that was in the room. Um, and um, you can look at him and see that this person was actually destined to be something in, you know, in life. You know, Tupac was, um, you know, I don't know if there's destiny, it, it depends on your perspective on things, but uh, when I first saw him, I knew that he was going to be somebody. Didn't know what or who he was going to be, but I knew he was not going to be just a typical youngster that was running around because he was constantly doing things, you know. I first met Tupac uh, as a young child. I don't actually remember the age, maybe five or six years old. He was very young. Um, met him, I believe, at a Kwanzaa celebration or something in New York City. Um, great, good friends with his mother and his stepfather, Matul Shakur, and that's how we actually came to know Tupac. Uh, and then some travels from the East Coast to the West Coast over the years, uh, Tupac was always a part of our life. He was part of an extended family. Uh, we worked in, in similar political formations. And um, during a short period of time when Tupac lived in Marin City, he actually stay, came to stay with us in Los Angeles, California. So. Tupac was always there. It was Tupac before he was uh, Tupac, the artist and everything like that. I knew him as a young man. Oh, I actually watched him develop into that young man that the world eventually knew. We had a, 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 a dual relationship. Uh, I was not involved in the entertainment industry at all. Uh, Tupac uh, is the primary reason I got involved. He asked me to get involved just based upon our relationship. He wanted me to come in and kind of watch him and see, you know, what developed. And from that, I learned a lot about the music industry as well as about the film industry. A lot of people talk about the two passionate sides of Tupac, and I say that and I, I smile because I often tell people, Tupac was a true Gemini if you look at astrology. Uh, Sometimes Tupac and I would have business decisions. We would make a decision, I might leave the room and come back in and whatever we talked about was just totally changed. And I would oft, often ask Tupac, could you just bring the other guy back, you know? Bring the guy back that agreed with me at the first time. But in that also, Tupac had uh, a sensitive side and he also had a hard side, you want to say it. Um, he, he represented the yin and the yang or the, the dualities of life. And you can see that portrayed in his music. When you have a, a Keep Your Head Up or Brenda's Got a Baby, and then you can talk about, you know, have other songs where he's really talking street life. And people say, well, you know, those seem to be contradictory, but they were not contradictory. They were just a part of Tupac. And he, he expressed the haves as well as the have-nots. Uh, he always wanted to have a pulse on the, uh, the, the people that was disadvantaged, the ones he, he called them thug life. You know, so people say, well, how can you talk about thug life and at the same time be so sensitive to an uh, uh, incest situation with Brenda's Got a Baby? Or talking about keep your head up in a, in a situation where, you know, single parenting and, and particularly single black women can deal with that. So that, that, those two different sides of Tupac was really a part of him. I mean, that was all of him. That was, and you had to know that. You had to begin to, uh, to understand that in order to work with Tupac. You really could not just say, well, Tupac is one dimensional. In fact, he's probably more than just two sides. Or, and I say is more because if we see tonight, we're here at a second uh, tribute celebration, for, you know, celebration of Tupac's life, and we, their music is constantly coming out. People are constantly finding out new things about Tupac. There's a side of Tupac that, that people never knew about, the poetry side. They knew about the music, they knew about the film. But they didn't know about, you know, the poetry, and that, I always saw those things in there. Um, Tupac was probably, because of those kind of things, uh, one of the most prolific writers that I've found. You know, we, he could write a song on the way to the airport. Uh, in fact, literally write songs out. He would take a legal pad and just, you know, just really do a song. And you, a lot of songs you hear today. That's that, that's that duality, I believe, in Tupac. I stopped working with Tupac on a professional level, on a business level, uh, because we had business disagreements. We, um, I never stopped uh, being a person that would be there for Tupac, I want to try to put it like that. Um, but in terms of a business, I just disagreed with the, the path that he was going in business. I didn't believe that he needed to go to the, to, uh, eventually to the record label that he was going to. I believe that he could actually, he had done so much on his own and he could really build upon what he already had there. And he really was kind of taking a backward uh, path in my mind, uh, as well as I believe there was a lot of baggage that um, he didn't need to bring, take on in that relationship. And so that was, uh, we actually had an interesting um, break in that, if you want to call it that. We disagreed, um, you know, we, we argued, and we embraced at the end of our meeting, you know, even though we stopped working like that, and from time to time he would, you know, constantly, would still send messages back 
through my son finding out how I, man, uh, how I was doing and I would do the same thing even though we, didn't, we never uh, didn't have the ability to get back and work professionally together again. I do believe at some point in, uh, in, our, in his career that we would have gotten back. I miss Tupac's, uh, uh, his energy, his laughter. Tupac, uh, the, the person, uh, was a very giving person. Um, he would give you the shirt off his back. I miss that kind of generosity. Also miss the kind of challenges that Tupac, because Tupac would also challenge me. I would challenge him to work and, and do interviews and things like that, and we'd go back and forth. And so he constantly kept you on your toes. Um, I, I miss his contributions to not only the music industry, but to the film industry. I believe that that's something that, uh, I don't believe we've actually seen where Tupac could have gone. I think we only saw the tip of the iceberg in that. So um, I miss him as a person. I miss him as a, as a, as a young man. And as, I felt as a friend in my life. Um, and somebody, when I say a friend, even though we're not in the same peer group, uh, we had a, more of a father-son relationship, just like one of my sons. Uh, and I miss his very spirit and his essence of being here.